Will I be greater than thou? Ah, now there was a way to determine who was the real boss. Was it Joseph or Pharaoh? Pharaoh said, Joseph, in every way you run this country, but when it comes to the throne, that's where I said. The throne is the heart and soul of the kingdom. Are you following me? Amen. What's our subject? From the ground up now. Keeping the concept in mind, there has to be one thing that seals the deal. And that one thing was the way Joseph or Potiphar interacted with that woman. There has to be one thing that seals the deal. Who truly runs Egypt? That one thing was the throne. Now, let's look at the throne. Let's go to Psalm 97. We're looking at Psalm 97, we shall read verse 2. Psalm 97, reading verse 2, our subject is, From the Ground Up. Do you have that? Yes. Cloud and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Now the throne we discovered is the heart, the soul, the nerve center, the cockpit. That's where the power of the kingdom is concentrated. And that's where Pharaoh said, that's where I am, not Joseph. The Bible says about God's throne, righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. What does the word habitation mean? You may see in your margin, establishment. What does that mean? It simply means foundation. The base, that on which everything stands or rests. Righteousness, judgment, are the foundation of God's throne. Psalm 89, reading verse 14. Psalm 89, reading verse 14. Justice and judgment are the habitations of thy throne. We have the same thing said in another psalm. The foundation of God's throne, and the throne represents the entire kingdom, and God's kingdom is universal. Follow me closely. The foundation of God's throne, what God's throne rests on, what God's throne is propped up by. In other words, you cannot get any lower. The base, the foundation of God's throne is righteousness. Why do I stress it so heavily? Because the Bible gives two sources for the expression of righteousness. Notice I said expression. The clearest expression of righteousness, of course, is Jesus Christ, his life. The other expression of righteousness is the codified version, which are the Ten Commandments. And because of our sinful minds, we look at the Ten Commandments, we just see don't don't, don't, and we don't see the life of Christ. You missed what I just said, let me say it again. The Ten Commandments reflect, express the life of Christ. In other words, if you want to understand what the Ten Commandments mean, what they try to express, look at the life of Christ. Amen. An architect looks at a blueprint. What does he see? What does he see? He look. Yes, yeah, say it loudly. He sees a house. Are you with me? But what do you and I see? Lines. Are you following me? But the architect, he sees a house. He sees the bedroom. He sees the basement. He sees the second floor. He sees every pipe. He sees a house. He sees a building. He sees a church because of the way he thinks. You and I see lines. When the converted man looks at the Ten Commandments, he doesn't see thou shalt not, thou shalt not. He sees a righteous life. Yeah. I said the converted person. And so I say again, the very foundation of God's throne, that on which the throne sits, is righteousness. And righteousness is expressed in God's law. Thy righteousness 
is an everlasting righteousness. All thy commandments are righteousness. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Psalm 119, verse 144. In uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, God speaking about Jesus Christ and to Jesus Christ, he says, the scepter of, uh, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Here again, we go from the throne that is based on righteousness to the scepter that is the symbol of the kingdom and that scepter is righteousness. Why am I stressing this? Because I need to do that and I proceed to make more clear from the ground up. What is sin? Transgression of the law. Transgression of the law. When Adam sinned, did he transgress the law? Yes. Yes, he did. Which law? The Ten Commandments. Now, I want us to look at what happened when the law of God, the moral law, was transgressed. And you will begin to understand the universal implications of living outside God's law or within God's law. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. We read verse 17. Genesis 3, reading from verse 17. I gave you a verse earlier, all thy commandments of righteousness. That's Psalm 119, 172. 119, 172. All right, I want to make that correction. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Listen to God as he speaks to Adam. Unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Read the next few words with me. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. What's our subject for today? From the ground up. Now, you can't get more basic than the ground. That's where we stand. That's where the buildings stand. That's where the oceans rest. That's where the lakes rest. That's where the forest rests. You remove the land and there's no place to stand. There's no place to be. You must have the ground. Amen. That's why we have the word, he is grounded. Now the very basis, that on which we stand, the, the oceans rest, the mountains rest, the forest rest, everything rests, the very land, the very ground that supports us, that's first thing first. When the moral law was broken. And so God said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee now. What does God mean by in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life? When God made man before sin, it was not God's will that people dig the ground and plant. Are you ready? <coughs> Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God's arrangement was, you pick and eat. No need for a hoe and a plow. Amen. A hoe and a plow are the result of sin. As good as they are in helping us to make a living today, a hoe and a plow, 40 acres and a mule is the result of sin. You folks know what 40 acres in the field mean. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Don't let us know you don't know. And so God said, In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Why? Because the ground would become hard. It would not be as fertile. Now, follow me. Let's reason together. What makes the ground fertile? The chemical content of the soil. Does it have enough nitrogen? Whatever else soil needs. You know that some farmers, they rotate their crops because some crops remove some nutrients from the ground, other crops put it in. Are you with me? Amen. The, 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 the ground must have what is necessary for plants to grow. Because the plants must draw from the ground in addition to drawing from water. So that when God cursed the ground, something chemical must have changed. Because now the ground is no longer fertile as it was 